This is August 2018. We've come to Ash today to visit the successful lofts of Russell Ayres. Good morning, Russell. Morning, Keith. Thanks for coming today. Yeah, lovely to see you again, mate. So you've had a good 2018 racing season? Not too bad, not too bad, really. So what you won? Well, I won the Fed from Falay. Uh, this year and had several other positions basically over the channel which is what I wanted to start doing this year apparently I've won the uh, channel averages in the club this year even though it was cut short unfortunately yeah. um, but that's the way it goes but they'll obviously be here for next year now yeah. so we might be in with a shout for the Fed um, averages too mightn't you? Possibly yeah, yeah, like yeah I've had do. three or four positions with them over the channel so yeah, it's good. Which we'll see. So tell us about one or two of your prior best positions you've won? Um, I suppose the, the best position I've had since I've raced here was 2016 in the BICC from Falay uh, when I was first central section ninth open uh, with a full sister of the, the cock that um, topped the fed for me from Falay this year yeah. which was Falay again so they seem to like that race point yeah. um, and also the same year um, with one of the NEH races with the BICC I was sixth section 26th open um, from Guernsey with uh, a Jan Arden based pigeon, the parents that came from um, House of Arden. Yeah. So You've had quite a few Fed winners there, haven't you? I've had a few Fed winners here, yeah. That was basically from my old Jansen uh, pigeons and the Franz Verheyen Hofkins, which uh, came from Brian Keegan. Um, I went out with him and met Franz Verheyen over there, which was a, an eye opener. Uh, 83, I think he was at the time, and he was running around like he was 20 odd. That's how the yeah. pigeons keep you young, I suppose. Yeah. Or keep you old. Well, yeah. <laughs> They're not doing me much good, but... <laughs> so this is your fillets, Fed winner then, Russell. That's correct, yeah. Tell me about him. Um, he's Jans father's a Dred Jansen cock from my old family, from Brian Keegan. Um, the dam is a Durrell Sablon from Steve McPhail, a friend of mine, who's got a little small stud of um, Sablon pigeons. Um, she's down through the lines of the drummer, and Lucky 84, uh, mm -hmm. I've got his name in Lucky 848. Yeah. Um, uh, has he got a name? Yeah, I call him Vale Racket, the way he came from the race, he came in like an absolute rocket. Yeah. Um, I've never seen a pigeon trap like it. Yeah, what personally. system was he on? Um, he was driving to nest. Yeah. He was a week behind um, the rest of the pigeons, who were all on eggs, uh, due to the fact that I dropped his original hen, and he'd taken a new hen, yeah. um, was driving her to nest. The week before, he came quite well, calling to nest. Um, so that day, something clicked with him and he just came like a bullet. Brilliant. What system do you race your old birds on then, Russell? Well, I've changed it this year to try in the roundabout because a lot of my best positions have always been with hens. And it seemed daft racing cocks all the time when I was sitting on some good hens. Yeah. So I tried the roundabout this year for the first time. Um, made a few mistakes uh, with it. Um, which is why I then paired them up. So I was finding I was getting hens laying, um, yeah. which was basically, I think, the way I was keeping them. So uh, I decided this year to do that, but next year it will be properly roundabout. Yeah, they've done too bad though, mate. You had a good season, didn't you? Yeah, they've done okay for me, but yeah. once again, it was basically the hens. The mealy cock came yeah. well for me and, and topped the fed, yeah. but the other positions were basically all with hens. Yeah. So, so when did you pair up? Um, this year I paired up beginning of um, February. Well, some of them February and then March with the race birds. Yeah. So I tried this year not taking babies from the race team, which I've always done before. Yeah. And obviously having a small setup, what I try to do is get the first round of stock pigeons eggs away underneath the race birds. Yeah. So I've only got 10, 15 days between the two rounds, yeah. which makes it easier getting them all out because they're about the same age, yeah. uh, which is, has also caused me a few problems with youngsters this year. Yeah. But you learn from your mistakes. So yeah. next year, hopefully yeah. I'll get it right. What um, would you feed them? Uh, they're fed um, Irish mixture um, is the base, which is either the gem or countrywide. Um, also the countrywide super diet, yeah. um, which is not really a breakdown mixture, but it's, it's a nice base. Um, I add a little bit of maize to it, a few beans to it, as and when needed, really. Yeah. How about training them? Uh, training, I usually start them at about 10 miles uh, and then I've got a nice little spot I train from from Winchester, then get a couple down further down from um, Lopcombe Corner, 
um, which is quite close to Salisbury, and then the pig farm near Salisbury, which yeah. is about 50 mile. Um, yeah. Try to get a couple of those in before racing, just to get the fitness up. Yeah, but during the season, do you race, do you train? It depends on how they're flying. If they're flying, most of the time, they were flying a good hour in the morning and an hour in the evening, so I like, didn't yeah. bother. Yeah. Um, but if, like I found with the Widowwood Cox, when they started getting a bit lazy, I'd give them a couple and then maybe swing them, take them to work, which is north, obviously, being near Reading, just to wake them up a bit, make them think. Um, apart from that, that's, that's it, really, with training. This is a smashing in, Russ. What's this one? Yeah, she's a Janssen Franz Verheyen. Uh, she topped the Fed for me in 2011 as a baby. And she was a pretty good youngster, really. I put her into the breed of Ayer and brought her back. And she won that as well. That race, she was first club, 25th Fed. Um, and the other race that she did was first club, first Fed, obviously. Good end, then, mate. She's a good end, yeah. yeah. Best old lines. She's bred a couple of winners for me as well. She's 2011, she's getting a bit wobbly on her legs now, so. Yeah, don't we all? Yeah. This is Russell's setup here at Ash. His main racing loft is 24 foot long and four sections. And his stock birds are kept in a small loft in the corner of the garden. This is the scene inside one of Russell's old bird racing sections. How long have you been in sporting, Russell? Uh, basically since I was born, I think. My dad had them first of all. My earliest memory is when I was about three, sitting in the young bird section, shaking the corn tin to get his young'uns in for him. Yeah. Um, we moved from Wokenham, that was for Reyes. Um, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Um, and school holidays I'd spend with my granddad, Bob Ayres, at Thorpe, and he kept pigeons as well. So even when we didn't have them at home, I was yeah. with them. Yeah. And I raced with my dad from 81 until about 80, 99, I think it was, when he passed away. And then I raced with John Eastwood in partnership yeah. for a short time because my mum wanted the garden back, so the pigeons went. Um, then I met Vicky, my wife now, and started up again uh, in 2006. But I blame Steve for that next door. Steve Appleby yeah. next door, yeah. Yeah, I, I was hey. sitting in the garden with Vicky one afternoon, not long after we first met, and a flock of pigeons come up out of the garden. And I walked over to see who it was, and it was Steve. You know, I haven't yeah. seen him for years. Yeah. I knew him when we both used to race in the Guildford. Yeah. So that kind of um, got it all going again. Yeah. So, so what families of pigeons you keep now? Uh, ba the base is basically the Janssen pigeons, Red Caesar, uh, Campus lines, and the Franz Verheyens from uh, Franz Verheyen himself and from Brian Keegan. Um, I've gone over a little bit more, a bit of distance racing. So I've brought um, some Jan Ardens in, which are basically uh, the Jan Polder pigeons, and also the Padfield pigeons, yeah. pound for pound, when it comes to distance racing. They're the ones. They're the guys, you know. Yeah. So I've brought some of those pigeons in last year and this year. Raced a few this year. They've been consistent, but yeah. they've only got up to 200 miles so far. Yeah, so basically you've been sort of racing up to middle distance now. Yeah. I've got a long distance. Basically now, yeah. So I've got a few Sablons in from a friend, Steve McPhail, and that cross with my Jansen as the bred the Fed winner and my uh, section winner in the BICC. Yeah. Get another lovely hen, Russell. What's this one? Yeah, this is the hen which, uh, Topped the section, central section in the BICC, and was ninth open for me from Fillet 2016, and the Young Bird race, which was a, a bit of a smash, a hard race. Uh, she's a full sister to the Mealy Cock that topped the Fed from Fillet this year yeah, for me. Lovely looking pigeons, yeah. aren't they? They are, yeah. yeah get a bit tatty now because we're in August and they're getting the old moats coming on now, but. She's a lovely hen, mate. She is a lovely hen. Now I just made a decision to put her to stock, mm. and she's bred me three pigeons already that have scored. Uh, one of them was up in the Fed this year from one of the races. And I was planning to put her into uh, the last couple, but unfortunately, as I said, uh, we didn't get to get that far with the birdages in the Fed, so. <laughs> well, Russell, let's talk about your stock birds now. How many stock birds do you keep? Uh, 12 pair. Uh, with a few spare hens. Yeah, so when did you pair them up? Um, this year I paired them up beginning of February. Yeah. Uh, purely because of time, not being able to get the youngsters out, they get too strong on the wing. Yeah. Um, 
I did try darkness a few years ago, but I tended to lose a lot of them. Yeah. What um, do you look for when you bring a stock bird in? Performance now. Um, yeah. With the distance pigeons, it, it's something that I think you've really got to do. Uh, yeah. You can buy a lot of pigeons with, with um, fabulous pedigrees, but you've got to have that pigeon which has performed and done the job. Yeah. There's no escape when they're flying that channel. No, it's performance, yeah. yeah. So what do you feed your stock birds? They're fed on um, a mixture of gem breeder and also the uh, countrywide uh, yeah. Ponderosa breeder. So how many babies do you breed each season? I breed about 40. To race? To race, and then from certain pairs, especially the older pigeons, I'll take a couple of later ones, you know, just basically in case the old pig pigeons don't fill anymore, so I've got the line still there. Yeah, and I've got the yeah. stock birds. Yeah. yeah. So what system do you race your babies on? They're purely to the perch. If they want to pair up, they can. Um, they get a bit raggedy, but I'm not really too bothered about the young bird yeah. racing. It's purely for experience. No dark? No dark. I tried that a few years ago, and I tended to lose a lot of youngsters, and I found that if they didn't come back on the day, I didn't see them. Yeah. In 2011, I decided to go back on the natural again, top the fed, and the best young bird season here, and was finding that I didn't lose so many pigeons, yeah. so I stopped it. How about training and racing your babies? Training is as much as I can get into them. Um, they go, first one is about three or four miles, then I tend to put them into Ropley, then Winchester, stay at Winchester for a while, then a couple from Salisbury, yeah. just basically to sort them out. Yeah, and racing, they go through the car, do they? Um, no, not really, no. I, I tend to, I don't like going to the, uh, the first young bird race. Um, I, I think personally that Blandford is too short here. They get dragged over the top in the fed. I'm just basically teaching the pigeons to go over and come back. Yeah. So I prefer to wait to the second half of the season. It's well, the drop back race is now to Yeovil for the last four this season. Yeah. And that's where I'll give them the four races. Yeah. So anything that's too raggedy, I'll stop. But the rest will, you know, fly through four yeah, races. Yeah. You know. All right, Russell. Thank you very much for having me over this morning, mate. I've enjoyed the loft visit, and all the very best for the rest of the season. Thank you for coming over, Keith. Nice to see you. Hopefully, you'll be coming again sometime. Yeah. We're at national winner. Hopefully. <laughs>